Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So I've done a few videos now about our air-to-air -air heat pump system that we're using for our heating. And one question I keep getting is, when do I expect uh, our heat pump to pay for itself? Um, so I would like to just briefly address that question in this video so that when people ask me again, I can uh, point them to this video instead of having to write a, write a reply. Um, you know, that's because I'm a very lazy man. Uh, so I've, I've written some notes again, uh, obviously, because you know, this is the way I roll. And uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything, because um, there's a, a few important things to, to consider when answering this question, because the simple answer, um, if I was to give you an, a, a very straightforward answer, the answer would be probably not. It's never going to pay for itself. Certainly are one anyway. Uh, and if you're intending to get a heat pump in, in order to try and save money, the chances are it's probably not going to work that way for you. Um, but it all depends on the specifics and in a couple of situations it might work out a little bit cheaper So I just want to run through a few of the things that I've written down here to make sure that um, You've got all of the sort of things in your mind when you're considering whether or not to get a, get a heat pump to replace your existing heating system Whatever that might be so um, There's a couple of important numbers the most important numbers that um, I'm not going to go through any maths particularly today but uh, there are a couple of, uh, of numbers that are worth considering uh, and that's the relative cost of what your existing um, heating uh, system runs at uh, in terms of uh, fuel, for example, either oil or gas or electric, uh, versus um, the difference in efficiency between your existing heat heating system and a heat pump. So when I say heat pump here, I'm, I'm not specifically referring to any particular type of technology. It could be um, air to water or air to air like what we've got. Um, but probably I'm going to restrict this to air source heat pumps rather than ground source heat pumps because those tend to be significantly more expensive um, and less common. Um, so uh, yeah, I think air to air, well, sorry, air source heat pumps are probably what we should be uh, considering in, in this particular discussion. Um, so the main number that I want to talk to you about is the difference um, in terms of gas versus electricity. So uh, most people currently have gas central heating. Um, and when you run your gas central heating, you're burning gas at something around you know, 85, 90% efficiency, if you're lucky, um, converting that gas into heat. Uh, so when you burn a kilowatt hour of gas, you get something like 0.9 kilowatt hours of heat. When you run a heat pump, heat pumps typically, and again, I'm being pretty general here, the specifics do matter. So uh, you know, please look into those if you're considering a particular heat pump. Um, heat pumps are typically between three and four times more efficient uh, than a boiler. So um, a 300% efficiency or 400% efficiency in turning electrical energy into heat energy, which means when you put one kilowatt hour of electrical energy into your heat pump system, you get three to four kilowatt hours of heat back out into your home, which is brilliant. That's the whole point of why everyone's talking about heat pumps is because they're so efficient. So if your heat pump, let's say, is three and a half times more efficient at turning energy into heat than your gas boiler, then you should think, well, okay, it's going to be cheaper to run. However, gas is about three and a half times cheaper than electricity. So if you burn 10 kilowatt hours of gas um, to, to heat your home, uh, then you're spending something in the region of three pounds at, at the current rate. Um, if you run your heat pump to uh, generate 10 kilowatt hours of, of heat, you're probably using somewhere in the region of 3 kilowatt hours of uh, electrical energy to do that heating for you instead of 10. Uh, and that means you're going to be um, using about three pounds worth of electricity at the current tariffs. You know, again, your specifics will, will vary. So what does that mean? Well, it costs about the same to run. That's certainly what we've discovered here with, with our heat pump, and that's more or less what we were expecting. It costs roughly the same amount to run our heat pump as it would if we were to run our gas central heating. That's fine, that's, that's what we expected. Um, so you might think, well, what's, what's the point? Why, why am I replacing my gas boiler with a, with, a, with a heat pump? Well, I'll come to that at the end because um, I think uh, that's an important question uh, to answer as well. Um, but what if you weren't using gas? What if you um, weren't replacing your gas boiler? What if you had an oil boiler or electric radiators, for example? Well, the equations are going to be slightly different because um, obviously the cost of oil is different to the cost of gas. I don't know anything about oil, I've got to say, I've got to admit. So um, if you do have an oil boiler and that's how you're, you're heating your house, 
check how much it costs you to run um, you know, per kilowatt hour. And it's important to use kilowatt hours here because then you can compare light to light with, with electricity. Um, how much does that cost you to run per kilowatt hour of heating of your house? Uh, and then you can do, do that calculation. Um, so that's great. Um, what about electric radiators? Well, here is where I think um, the best argument can be made for um, a, heat pump, a heat pump being significantly cheaper to run because now we're comparing like, like with like. Um, if you're heating your house with electric radiators, um, those will be converting electrical energy into heat energy at roughly 100% efficiency. Maybe a little bit less for losses elsewhere, but let's assume 100% efficiency. If your heat pump is running at 300 or 400% efficiency, well, there you go. You're immediately, um, it's immediately cheaper to run a heat pump than it is electric radiators. So if you have electric radiators and you want to switch to a heat pump, you will absolutely see a saving in your, in your heating costs. There is no question about that. But there is another big important number that's, that's worth considering, and that's the cost of the install, of course. They are very expensive to install. Our um, air-to-air heat pump system that we've got in this house costs us £8,000 to install. Um, it's working very well for us, and I do not regret it at all. Uh, if you're getting an air-to-water heat pump system installed, they tend to be a bit more expensive, 10 to £15,000, something along those lines. But you are able to get the Boiler Upgrade Scheme grant from the government, which will pay you £5,000. And that might reduce the cost of your install um, down to, you know, comparable to what we've paid, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but it's still going to be many thousands of pounds. So you might be thinking, well, if it's not really any cheaper to run a heat pump and it's costing me many thousands of pounds to, um, to replace my boiler with a, with a heat pump, why, why would I even bother? Well, um, you've also got to account for the fact that replacing a gas boiler or any other type of heating system with a new gas boiler, let's, let's say, for an example, that also costs some money. It is not going to be as much as installing a heat pump by any means, but you're probably still talking a few thousand pounds, two, three, four thousand pounds, something in that ballpark. It depends how extensive your replacement is, whether you need to you know, replace any pipe, pipe work or radiators or anything else like that. Um, so, you know, the, now what you've got to do is you've got to consider what's the difference in terms of the install cost compared to a heat pump. And that may be then, we're down to a few thousand pounds, let's say. So, okay, so we've still got an additional cost for install over and above what we would to replace an existing gas boiler, for example, uh, and with no particular benefit in terms of running costs. So, is there a way to make it worthwhile? Well, maybe if you include solar and battery storage in your um, home. So, if you run a heat pump using electricity, you can reduce the cost of the electricity you use to run that system by using solar and battery storage. In the winter, there is not a great deal of solar generation. So most of the time, solar is not going to help you a huge amount. But what is probably going to help you is battery storage. Um, because what you can do, if you have an off-peak tariff such as Octopus Go, um, and there, there are others around as well, but if you're able to charge up your home storage battery, at a cheap tariff, for example, we've we've got Octopus Go and our overnight tariff is currently seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour as opposed to the, the day rate of 40 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, I believe the current rate is something in the region of 12 pence per kilowatt hour. So it, it depends on, on the time that you uh, you fix your tariff. Um, and that's absolutely you know worth looking into if you're if you're considering this sort of thing. But let's say I was able to charge up my home storage battery at cheap uh, with cheap electricity, I can then use that to run my heating, which would bring down the cost. However, please bear in mind, heating takes a lot of energy, even with a heat pump. So for example, when we're running our, our heat pump system, we're typically averaging somewhere between 10 and 20 kilowatt hours per day just for the heating. And um, that's at the moment in, in January. It was a little bit more than that in December when it was super cold. It got up to you know 20 plus, even up to 30, 35 when it was really, really cold uh, kilowatt hours per day, that is. Um, so in order to be able to cover a good chunk of our heating, we would need a battery in the region of 20 kilowatt hours, for example, to make sure that we're covered for most, most days. However, that has an additional cost, of course. Um, so in fact, I have a, um, a very sort of rough and ready uh, calculation um, video. Uh, I'll put that up in the, uh, well, probably up in that corner there, uh, and uh, to, to link to that video, uh, where I do a, a, an, a an approximate calculation of how much it would 
cost me to run um, my heating system over the winter uh, with different sizes of battery and um, whether or not it would then be worthwhile getting a larger battery to, to help cover that. Uh, and my conclusion was that actually the additional cost of that battery doesn't then really offset what you save um, through having that battery to help reduce the, the heating costs. So it's a balance again. Uh, if you've got a battery anyway to help you reduce your, your electricity usage, then you might find that adding in a little bit of additional um, capacity might help you in the winter as well um, and help reduce your costs. But it is absolutely worth running some calculations to see if purchasing that extra battery storage is worthwhile for you because you might find that it's um, it's you're not actually saving any money. And then we're back to this question of, well, it's never going to actually pay for itself because um, your savings in terms of running costs uh, are not sufficient in order to uh, recoup that, uh, that outlay on your, on your battery. Um, so let's assume you've got solar, you've got battery and you've got your heat pump. You've, uh, you've spent an awful lot of money and you, let's say you have reduced your, your, uh, your energy bills for your heating. You are still not very likely to completely recoup that cost. You may recoup some of it. Um, but it's from from what the back of the envelope calculations that I've done and the analysis that I've done is very unlikely that you're going to completely cover the cost of the install of all of that equipment. However, I'm not going to be able to tell you precisely in your situation whether that's true or not. It's very likely that's going to be the case for me. But um, you will. It's absolutely dependent on on the specifics of your particular install, your particular lifestyle, your particular um, uh, house insulation levels, all of that stuff. So. There is no simple answer is, is what I'm going to say. So why have I done it? Uh, and why would I suggest that you get a heat pump um, anyway, regardless of whether it's going to pay for itself or not? The major benefit of replacing a gas central heating system or oil or any other fossil fuel based um, central heating system with a heat pump is the reduction in emissions. So uh, a lot of people say, well, your electricity is coming from gas. So, you know, you're not being any greener than you would if you were just burning that gas in your house at, uh, you know, uh, at, at source as it were. Well, here's the thing, a good chunk of the grid is actually covered by low carbon sources of electricity and gas only makes up, um, I think it's somewhere in the region of a half, please don't quote me on that, I'm, I'm not completely up to speed with uh, the exact statistics. Um, but let's say even if the entire national grid was running on, on, on gas power, uh, fired power stations, um, when a gas, a gas fired power station uh, converts gas into electricity, it typically um, gets to your house at something in the region of 40 to 50% efficiency, which means that for every kilowatt hour of gas that gets burned at the power station, you end up with 0.4 or 0.5 kilowatt hours of electricity at your home. So, okay, yes, we are losing a fair bit of that energy along the way through, you know, the inefficiencies of, of the burning of the gas and the transmission losses and all that stuff. Um, but you're then converting that half a kilowatt hour of, of electricity into, well, let's say um, three to four times that. So one and a half to two kilowatt hours of heat energy if you're using your heat pump. So let's say you wanted to heat your home with one kilowatt hour of energy. In order to do that with a, a gas boiler, you'd need slightly more than one kilowatt hour of gas. If you wanted to heat your home with one kilowatt hour of energy from a, uh, a heat pump, that would require about a, a quarter to a third of a kilowatt hour of electricity. In order to generate a quarter to a third uh, of a kilowatt hour of electricity from a gas power, gas fired power station, you would need something in the region of half to two thirds of a kilowatt hour of gas. So, okay, now we're using less gas by burning it in a power station uh, and then using that electricity to heat our home using a, a heat pump rather than using that gas directly in our home. And that is assuming that the national grid is covered completely by gas. But of course, that's not the case. Um, some of the, the electricity that we would use to run our heat pumps is coming from nuclear and wind and uh, other low carbon uh, electricity sources. So the argument is very clear. If you are using electricity to heat your home using a heat pump, you are absolutely reducing your impact on the environment and reducing the emissions that you're uh, contributing. So if that's important to you, um, then absolutely get a heat pump to, uh, to heat your house. But of course there are other benefits uh, over and above that. If that's not important to you, 
I'm not here to judge, um, but you might find that a heat pump heating system is actually a more comfortable heat than uh, uh, than using gas uh, for your heating. Uh, that's certainly what we found. We've been very happy with our air-to-air -air heat pump system. So uh, um, please watch uh, the other videos that I put out recently. Um, describing how we've been living with it and uh, you might find that it's worth considering in, in that respect it, even if it's uh, not going to save you money in the long run you might find it's a, a more comfortable way to live so yeah that's really all I've got to say today and um, there are obviously many many things you need to consider when deciding on whether to get a heat pump system uh, this is not this should not be used as your only source um, I've got plenty of other videos on the channel about our, our heat pump system but I recommend watching um, other videos by channels like Heat Geek, for example, and um, they're very good at um, uh, explaining the air to water type heat pump systems. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of other sources of information out there. I recommend uh, exploring a wide avenue of, uh, of, of sources of information um, before you make your decision. So I hope that's helped give you a little bit of extra context uh, in, and help you with your decision making process if you're considering getting a heat pump heating system. And if you found any of my videos useful, I would certainly appreciate it if you um, subscribe to the channel and like and share and all that jazz. Um, and yeah, I will have plenty more videos coming up soon uh, covering all sorts of things. In particular, our uh, solar and battery install should be coming along in the next few weeks, which is extremely exciting. Um, and yeah, I'll be covering all of that on the channel and uh, how we've been living with it and all that stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.